I'll join you in just a moment here. Philippians chapter 1, starting the new series, Be Encouraged. In today's message title, I read all through Philippians chapter 1, and I was trying to think about what would be a neat name for, for this first message, but all I could come up with was, they're doing ministry together. I mean, as you read it, that's what they're doing. They're doing ministry together. And so it's, a, it's an exciting thing when you think about doing ministry together, when you think about all of the things that they do and you read about here in this chapter. And I wonder if you think about all of the different types of ministry that go on, even in this church, even this morning, as, as those who led in worship prepared this week to, to sing praises to God, to bring you into that, that you would bring worship to God. There's those who are handling the, 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 the screen up here and the sound system or maybe sending things out on the internet so people could join in in this worship service with us doing ministry together. There are those who are praying for you throughout the week doing ministry together. There are those that as we meet together right now are praying for this service. There are those who are serving in other ministries that are going on right now with the children and taking care of the kids all over the place. And even while we're here in, in the comforts of our church, we've got missionaries and folks that are all over the world that are doing God's work together. We do ministry. We saw a great video of that this morning. Thank you, Maddie, for sharing that with us. Doing ministry together. That's what I want to talk about this morning. And I want us to be encouraged about that. This whole book, my hope in this, in this study is that we would be encouraged. Encouraged. Let me give you the definition of encouragement. The action of giving someone support. The, the action of giving someone support, giving them confidence, and giving them hope. Who here wants to support somebody? Who here wants to give others confidence? Who here wants to give others hope? Anybody? Look at the arms up. Who here wants to receive support and confidence and, and wants hope given back to them? Who wants that? Raise your hands. Listen, don't try to do it all alone. Don't be like, I'll just be the encourager. I'll be the one that just encourages everybody. I don't need it coming back. When you, when you read this letter, the amazing part about this is this, this letter of encouragement going out to these folks here. And, and Paul is in a prison. Of all the places to be, he's in a place a little less comfortable than here. And he is writing letters of encouragement. Now you say, well, listen, maybe he's just taking it all himself and being the encourager. But he knows as he does this that they are praying for him. And that they're joining in on his sufferings. And that while he's there doing the work that the Lord's called him to do where he's at, they're out doing the things that he's taught them that the Lord's doing in them. They're still doing ministry together. And that's my hope for this, for this series, is that we be encouraged. In Philippians chapter 1, starting in verse 3. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine, for you all making my prayer with joy, because of your partnership in the gospel from the first day until now. And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. It is right for me to feel this way about you all because I hold you in my heart for you are all partakers with me of grace. We spoke about grace this morning already. Both in my imprisonment and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel. For God is my witness how I yearn for you all with the affection of Christ Jesus. And it is my prayer that your love may abound more and more with knowledge and all discernment so that you may approve what is excellent and be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. And now God's word has gone forth and it shall accomplish that for which he purposed on this place, in this day, for this church and those who are listening at home. Do you believe that to be true? Then let me hear an encouraged amen. Amen. Just some of the verses. We'll highlight a couple others as we go here today. In doing this 
ministry together, it starts out, and what I see in there is that there is a thankfulness for each other. And Paul says, I remember them. I remember you. And he refers to them in this partnership that they have in Christ Jesus. And even though they're in separate places, he's in one place and they're in another, he still feels that connection. It's that spirit connection that they're doing ministry together. He says he yearns for them. He holds them in his heart. There's sufferings in his afflictions coming back the other way. And it just speaks to me that regardless of where somebody's at, we have those who are in our church, those who have gone on maybe to other churches, other ministries, serving in missionaries, that they're still part of this family, this family of faith. Same God, same Spirit, just in a new location, doing God's work. And Paul loves these people. It's like his family. It's like his children. And he wants to raise them up. Do I have parents in the, in the church today? Any parents? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up if you're a parent. I know you're tired. Maybe have your kids hold your arm up. Rest it on their heads to keep them still. Listen, parents, you can put your arms down. What do you hope for your kids? What is like the main things as you're raising them up that you just want to see in their life? Any parents out there, go ahead, speak to me. Let's join in together. Let's do this part of, of ministry together. Speak to me. What do you hope for your children? Eternal life. Eternal life. That they would have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That they would love Him. What else, church? I think I heard somebody say, love others. Love Christ, love others. Anything else? I'm sorry? Servant. Be a servant of Christ and perhaps go out into this world. You raise them up. We have them for a short period of time that God has entrusted to us and then we send them out. And they go into this world. Now, when you send them out, what do you do? Do you say, listen, when they, when they go out to serve the Lord, or they go out and they, and, they, and they leave your home after you've raised them up, maybe they start their own family, maybe they go off to college, maybe they just want to go live by themselves. Do you, what do you do to them? Do you tell them, get out, stay out? Lose the number. You don't say that. You pray for them. And you say the door is always open. And when you want to come back, you, you come back. Maybe you see him at lunch one day. Maybe you see him at holidays. And it starts all over again. Like they were never gone. They're family doing it together. As I was studying Philippians chapter 1, I couldn't help but think of Munster Church. Think about the first time our family walked through that back door right there. We didn't know that you come in the side door, so we come through the back door, and now it's a giveaway. We're new here. Oh, they're new. They come through the back door. But what we saw here was the Lord alive and well in this church, and from the youngest to the oldest, servants of the Lord. Loving each other, loving the Lord, serving together. It was an amazing place. You talk about yearning for a place. You talk about that they're in a heart. I remember having dinners and we dropped the kids off for a function here and me and Angie would go out and we would just talk. This place is special. Of course, we belonged to a church and we had no idea the Lord would bring us into the, into the fold here and be part of this family. We're just amazed by all of that now that we get to worship with you. We love it. And then I think about the sufferings. And you can't help but think of this family right here. And you think of the last two years and all of the pain that Pastor Jeff has gone through. You think of all the sufferings, even in this last six months, 
trying to recover. You think all that Lisa's gone through, and as a family. But they didn't have to go through it alone, did they? Brothers and sisters in Christ rallied around and prayed for them, lifting them up and encouraging them. That's what families do. So thankful that the Lord is going to use you in ministry. Been praying that more than anything. Heal him, heal him, but use him in ministry. And you're being used in ministry. And every single person here would say that when it comes to a lunch or it comes to a holiday or, or that door opens and they walk back in, welcome home. This is your home. We thank you. Ministry together. It don't matter where we're at. We're serving the same God, led by the same Spirit. We're just in different places, church. And Paul goes on and says that he prayed for them. And it wasn't just some simple little prayer, as sometimes we offer up. I know years ago, go back maybe about 15 years, I really struggled with, with prayer. It was just so stale, and I couldn't figure it out. And then I realized it was because of my relationship with the Lord. When you open up God's Word each day, and you let Him speak to you. When you let other believers in Christ talk with you and speak with you. When you look at the circumstances that the Lord has you in, and you hear Him speaking to you through that, every day you got something fresh to talk to the Lord about and prayer comes to life but at the time I couldn't really utter out other than the same prayer every day every day in the church that we were attending thousands of people in attendance up in the northwest suburbs and we're driving up there each week and they had decided that they were going to do a prayer week, I think it was. It was either a prayer week or like five days or four days, and the church was open 24 hours a day. There was a prayer room, and you signed up for when you were going to pray. And you signed up for these hour slots, and I signed up for 6 a.m. so I could beat traffic. And, and I remember signing up and going to Angie, an hour's a long time. What am I going to pray about? And I got in there, and of course, it's the prayers. Everybody wrote a prayer request in the church, and they, they turned it into the church. Some put their names on it, some didn't. But you walk into this room, and there's this big bowl there, and it's got all of these pieces of paper in it. And every now and then, they would swap it out, and here comes a new batch. And you're praying in general for all of them, but then every now and then, you reach in, and you grab a new one, and you open it up, and, and you read that prayer request, and you pray for that person. And when, if it's 10 minutes, it's 10 minutes. If it's 20 minutes, it's 20 minutes. And you put it back in, and you grab another one, and you keep going. And, and after a while, I'm there longer than an hour. Church, there is enough to pray about. And Paul says, I prayed for you. He prayed that their love may abound. He prayed for knowledge and discernment for his brothers and sisters in Christ, that they would understand God's Word and understand how to use it out there, that they would approve excellent things and test that which is different so as things contrary to what they read comes into their life, they'd be able to fight that off and know this is truth. He's praying that for them. He prays that they would be pure and blameless. He prays that they would be filled with righteousness. Church, what if we prayed for each other like that this week? Do you think we might feel encouragement? Anybody? Anybody? Well, listen, we don't have a big bowl sitting up here. We haven't made plans to keep the church open 24 hours this week each day. But you've got a directory, don't you? And it's in your home. Last week I gave a challenge. I'm going to give you another one today. Every day this week, open this up. Don't choose, because sometimes we pick and choose. I'll pray for this person. I'll pray for... No, randomly, see who the Lord has for you, and you open it up. Mm, there's the foxes. I'm going to pray for the foxes. <laughs> Were you encouraged there? Very good. Open up to the beginning. Pray for him. Then randomly open up to the middle. There's the foxes again. <laughs> this doesn't happen unless it's God. Are you in the back too? And then open up to the back and pray for them. 
<laughs> the next day, open it up again, and the foxes are there, get on the phone. <laughs> wow. But that's how the Lord works. Obviously, if he keeps bringing the same name, if he keeps bringing it before you, Lord, do you want me to call him? Do you want me to stop by? Do you want me to write a letter to him? Pray for your family of faith here, would you, church? Join me in that this week. Randomly choose people. If they don't go to church here any longer, guess what? They're still part of our family. If they've gone on to be with the Lord, praise God for that. And remember their family that's still here and pray for them. Bring them before the Lord. Remember and pray. And then Paul encourages them with future hope. He says this in, in, his, in, in the word here, that he who began a good work and you will bring it to completion. He's confident in this on the day of Jesus. And so what he wants to do is remind them of what they will look like, what they will feel like, what they will act like, how they will be perfect one day. God already sees the completed perfect you. It's for us to step into that and move closer to that. And Paul says we need to encourage each other that one day we'll be like that. And the great encouragement there is that God's in control of it. He who began the work, not you or I. Have you ever had a day where you don't feel much like you were a Christian? Have you ever had a down day? Have you ever messed up? Have you ever had doubts? Paul says it doesn't depend on you. It's the one that began the good work in you. The unbeliever, the lost soul can't wake up one day and just say, listen, I want to be saved. I, I want a completely changed life apart from God acting first. Apart from the Spirit convicting them of their sins and their need for a Savior. Apart from the Holy Spirit revealing truths of God's Word. and Apart from God sending believers in their path to witness to them. And long before that, 2,000 years ago, Christ going to a cross for them. Before the foundations of the world, that great plan of redemption laid out. It starts with God. And it can never be lost. He who began the good work, he'll bring it to completion. Paul remembers them. Paul prays for them. Paul encourages them. This is who you are in Christ and this is what you will be. Now, sometimes people leave churches. I've been in ministry long enough now to know that people leave churches, and sometimes they're a little dissatisfied. And I've asked, why are you leaving? Do you know what they say? Here's what they say, church. This is why they're leaving. I'm leaving the church because they constantly remembered me and held me in their hearts. I'm leaving the church because they prayed some awesome prayers for me. I'm leaving the church because they encouraged me. I'm leaving the church because they reminded me of who I am in Christ and who I'll yet to be in Christ. I'm leaving because of that. Not. Nah. No one's ever said that. Munster Church, if you want to see the Lord do some amazing things Ahead of us still, here on this corner, you remember each other. You pray for each other. You encourage one another. You remind each other of who you are in Christ and who you will yet be. And the Lord will do some amazing things. Do you believe that, church? Amen. The rest comes quickly. And then I'll let you out of here. In Philippians chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, he says, I want you to know, brothers, that what has happened to me has really served to advance the gospel. So that it has become known throughout the whole imperial guard and all the rest that my imprisonment is for Christ. And most of the brothers, having become confident in the Lord by my imprisonment, are much more bold to speak the word without fear. He lets them know, listen, the work continues regardless of where I'm at. It just goes forward. He shares the gospel and he lands in 
prison. You would think he would stop. He doesn't. What's your occupation? If you were thrown into prison for your occupation, would the first thing be to go about doing your work right there immediately? I was thinking about that. I was thinking about different professions. I was thinking about, let's say somebody felt called to be a homemaker, a housewife, and, and, and make sure that the house is all taken care of, everyone's fed, and doing a magnificent... Can you imagine getting thrown into prison for being a housewife? Would the first thing you do be to get a broom? In this dirty, dungeon-like place, would you go and get a broom? Would you tell everybody else, get your laundry together? I'm doing it at two. If you were in bookkeeping, would you pull up a desk and start teaching everybody how to do finances and how to handle the, the coins that they have there? Paul continues on, and he says, you continue on where you're at, I'm going to continue on where I'm at. Here comes the second challenge, church. There's only two for you this week. The first is to pray, but here's the second one, is that you will be in one of two seasons you'll find yourself in today. There's no middle, I don't believe, of the road. You're either in a season of trial and in a season of need, dependent on what the Lord's going to do next to move you out of this season, or you're in a season of blessing, what are you in? Before this day ends, I'm going to ask that you get a piece of paper and a pen, and you really think about it. I don't want you to think about, well, today was an okay day, and this happened, and that happened. Listen, it's not about that. The overall season you're in, is it blessing or is it trial? And I want you to write down on that piece of paper, this is the season I'm in, Lord. And then what I want you to do next as Paul's doing right here, is I want you to figure out where's my opportunity in that season to be Christ to people. You see, we don't have to just have seasons of blessings, even in the seasons of trials, even in the seasons of hardships. There's ways to bless others. They serve together. And finally, Paul goes on to talk about to live and to die. To die is gain, to, right? What are you talking about, Paul? You, if you die, it's gain? I mean, you really don't want to be with me that much that you'd rather die? No, to be with Christ face to face. He was... Saul, the great persecutor of the church. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And then there's the conversion, and he gives his life, and here he is now in this prison. What he wouldn't give to see Christ face to face. And this time, not here, why are you persecuting me? But, but Paul, Paul, well done, good and faithful servant. To be out of this life, you would be able to say goodbye to sin. You would be able to say goodbye to temptations. Be able to get, say goodbye to sorrow and to death and all of the things that hold us and weigh us down here. To be free from all of that. To see Christ. He would so rather be there because that is gain. But in this moment, God has a different plan. And God wants him to serve with the others. Side by side, it says in the scripture. Side by side, that they would strive together. That they would stand firm together. That they would be fearless together. It's his job to raise them up. Church, it's been a blessing since we walked through that back door as the new people. It's been a blessing and we think about you all the time. And we pray for you all the time. And any opportunity that I get to speak here, I will remind you of who you are in Christ and what you will be. In church, it's our job together to go out in the season of life that the Lord has for us and only He knows what's around the corner for each and every one of us. Seasons of blessings or seasons of trial, but we can still serve together side by side. 
Let's do ministry together. Would you bow your heads and close your eyes?